o'clock. It's Friday morning. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good to see you again. Yes, good morning. Glad to have you back. Yeah. And we're heading into the weekend, which is always a wonderful thing. So we sat down and I said, so Heather, what do you got going on this weekend? Figuring it was going to be a quick response. No, it was like a paragraph. You have so much going on this weekend. Honestly, I just can't even, I, 8 o'clock, Miranda Lambert. That's how, that <laughs> I've got my eyes set on Miranda Lambert tonight. A lot of folks have very busy weekends it as well. Is, there's a lot going on, a lot of food to eat too. Uh, let's talk about the weather forecast for the weekend. What's it going to look like? Here's Sherry Swens. Good morning, Sherry. Good morning, you guys. Happy Friday. There's a lot of food to eat every weekend, isn't there? <laughs> I love this place. <laughs> There's so much to do, and the weather is going to be spectacular. In fact, we have a little warm-up coming back for our first weekend of autumn. Fall officially arrived yesterday evening, and it is beautiful out there. Clear skies, light winds, and dry air. Look at that humidity, 14% humidity. I woke up this morning going... I did not drink enough water before I went to bed last <laughs> night. Only 18 is the dew point. Temperatures already in the 60s at this early hour. 629 is the sunrise. 636 is the sunset. We're going to get back into some upper 70s mid morning, mid 80s by noon. Lots of good sunshine for our first full day of autumn. And we'll be looking for a high today right back in those low 90s where we finished summer yesterday. We'll look at the warmer numbers, though, in your eight day forecast right now. Good morning to Nate Tannenbaum. Let's get a look at your drive, and here he is. Okie doke. Happy finally Friday, and the freeways are in excellent shape. A heads up again about the ongoing work for your new favorite freeway project, the I-15 Tropicana rebuild. Eventually a complete rebuilding of the Trop and the I-15, starting with a whole bunch of littler stuff, various lane reductions, HOV lane closures in both directions. Right now the northbound has the uh, far right lane taken away. Doesn't appear to be a deal breaker by any means. Obviously Allegiant Stadium here and uh, the Rio. Uh, I believe in the next little while we'll probably see some NDOT folks uh, moving those cones further over to the right shoulder. Coming up in our next report, we'll check in on that shutdown of the strip yesterday. I'm pretty sure they're all done. We'll take Take a look in just a few minutes. John, Heather. Nate, appreciate that. A serial stabber under arrest here in the Valley Metro says he was responsible for multiple stabbing, some deadly, over mm. the past week. 33-year-old Christopher Martell is accused of killing two women and seriously injuring two others. Most of these attacks happened between Flamingo and Harmon around UNLV. Officers say surveillance video from nearby businesses led to the arrest. The stabbings, of course, are not very far from the UNLV campus, which has students and others living in that area concerned about their safety. University police say campus is a safe place place. We are well aware of what happens in our surrounding community and how it might impact us, but generally speaking, our campuses are an island of safety and we take great pride in providing that service for them. University police are now considering adding more plain clothes officers to increase surveillance. Two people are dead after a house fire up in Centennial Hills. Las Vegas Fire and Rescue say a man and woman were killed in this fire. The heat and the flames, in fact, were too intense for firefighters to enter right away when they got to the scene. And the roof eventually caved in as neighbors watched. By the time I got there, it was already sort of being put out. They had the big... Uh the, uh, the ladder extended out to the top of the roof, spreading uh, the fire everywhere, I mean, was spraying water everywhere. Certainly a tragedy. The cause of the fire right now is under investigation. Every year, thousands of Nevada children are reported missing. Most of them are right here in Las Vegas. And many also considered runaways who leave home and then they end up in unsafe situations. Our Sasha Loftus talked to a family searching for their 15-year-old daughter. Days after their daughter vanished, Autumn and William Trejo are doing everything they can to bring her home. We're not complete without her. 15-year-old Julie Trejo has not been seen since last Friday, and her parents are worried she's in danger. And it's hard for me to walk through the house and, and not see her there. So they're now spending all their time canvassing neighborhoods in North Las Vegas where anyone could have seen her. This is very, very troublesome. We would like to find Julie. Samantha Potts of local organization Missing Justice is helping with the search. She says cases like Julie's, which North Las Vegas police has classified as a runaway, aren't uncommon. According to Nevada Homeless Alliance, our state has the highest rate of unsheltered, unaccompanied kids in the nation. While about three quarters of teens who've left home return safely, Potts says these situations still deserve time and attention. They are absolutely in danger because they may have ran away and linked up with the wrong people. As for Autumn and William, they hope their efforts will encourage anyone who may know something 
to help make their family whole again. Las Vegas, please bring our baby home. Sasha Loftus, 8 News Now. Julie, last seen near Commerce, and Anne, if you have any information about her whereabouts, please call police. Five minutes past four, conspiracy theorist Alex Jones on the witness stand again. He's being sued in another Sandy Hook defamation trial. Jones admits he lied when he called the 2012 school massacre a hoax. And now he's trying to limit the financial damages that he must pay to victims' families. They say they've been harassed and threatened after Jones claimed they were actors. Jones says he's done apologizing to the families. He called the judge a tyrant and the proceedings a kangaroo court. So how do I answer why I think something's a kangaroo court if I'm not supposed to say why I think it is? It was certainly a testy experience there. In a separate trial last month, Jones was ordered to pay two Sandy Hook families $50 million in damages. This case could cost him even more. In New York, it is day four of the United Nations General Assembly, and once again, Russia's invasion of Ukraine is very much on the agenda. The U.S. is urging allies in other countries to really put some pressure on Russia and end this war. Here's Bradley Blackburn with more. Fearing the prospect of being sent to the front lines in the war on Ukraine, many Russians are scrambling to flee the country, with traffic backed up at several border exits. The Ukrainian offensive continues and pushes back the Russians even while they're trying to find men, find soldiers to put in place of those that have already been killed. The rush to leave after Russian President Vladimir Putin's surprise announcement earlier this week of a partial military mobilization of 300,000 reserve troops. It's Russia's first mobilization since World War II. The very international order that we have gathered here to uphold is being shredded before our eyes. We cannot we will not allow President Putin to get away with it. Addressing a United Nations Security Council meeting Thursday, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken laid out the case against the war and highlighted Putin's latest threat to use nuclear weapons. President Putin said that Russia would not hesitate to use, and I quote, all weapons systems available, end quote, in response to a threat to its territorial integrity. A threat that is all the more menacing given Russia's intention to annex large swaths of Ukraine in the days ahead. Voting began today in referenda in four Russian-controlled areas of eastern and southern Ukraine on whether to become part of Russia. Western nations have condemned those votes as a sham and non-binding. Officials warned that the Kremlin might use any Ukrainian effort to recapture those regions as an attack on Russian territory. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. Ukraine and its allies have already said they will not recognize the outcome of the vote since most of the pre-war Ukrainian population has fled the areas that are in question. Congresswoman Liz Cheney was the guest speaker at last night's Nevada State Dinner Gala. It was hosted by the Vegas Chamber in D.C. Cheney, who lost a Republican primary in Wyoming this year, spoke about different topics, including the war in Ukraine and the upcoming election. The gala capped off a busy few days for the Vegas Chamber there in D.C. where they've been pushing for our local economy in the nation's capital. Clark County has turned over its election poll worker information to the Republican National Committee. Now, the move comes after a lawsuit filed by the RNC over the last presidential election. It requested the data because poll workers can't be just from one political party under Nevada law. The RNC says that information is public record is, and they need it part of their, as part of their lawsuit, Heather. Uh, voters can expect information on upcoming ballots here in the mail in the next week. The general election ballot includes three statewide ballot questions seeking amendments to the state constitution. Boulder City voters will have three additional questions and Henderson voters will have one additional question. Coming up next, some great weekend events for nature lovers. Who doesn't love nature? Uh, yes, we're this all is pro be fun. nature. We're pro <laughs> nature here. Plus, Las Vegas Raiders looking to put a win on the board on Sunday. We'll hear from star receiver Devonte Adams. And training camp opens for the Golden Knights. How players are hoping this season will be better than the last one. Cherry, <laughs> we'll have a lot of Golden 